gazelle shaft uh, study and how they blew up and see if we could have done a better job. If you recall, this was a study where a German company had bought a large U.S. oil producer and just wanted to compete in the U.S. market. So they came out with a contract that would lock in the price to their suppliers. And essentially their business exploded because the contract they were offering was fantastic. It was locking in prices up to 10 years. So the suppliers were like, great, I, you're, you know, I'm not going to have to pay up. But they also had something very unique in the contract. They had a rider in the contract that said if the prices were to rise, they would benefit from the rise in prices. They would get sort of a, a payment or a dividend on top of locking in their price. The prices were trading about 16, 17 a barrel. They put this rider in there and exploded. I mean, their sales team couldn't keep up with the amount of contracts they were writing. They hired a hot shot. Uh, they brought in a hot shot. That had a great track record of hedging oil. This was back in the or this was back in the early '90s. Than they did. <clears throat> well, let's take a look. First of all, let's understand the optionality when markets are in different term structures. And first, let's look at the contango. They were in a steep backwardation, but let's look at contango. Contango is, of course, when the futures is higher than the spot. Uh, so you're going to pay up. Um, as you go out in time. And if we look here, and we're going to look at slash CL, WTI, uh, West Texas Intermediate Crude, and we can see that the spot price is trading right around 25. The future is about to expire into the spot. And we can see that the curve is in contango. And even if we go farther out, but we're looking at a situation where if I am a situation where I'm buying a put, and I'm buying a long dated put. Remember the commodities, the option market in commodities is tied to the futures contract corresponding to that expiry. So what I mean by that is if I look back in, um, if I look, let's say I move out and look how it goes up. So if I'm looking at November, spot's not 25, it's the futures is 32. So that means if we are buying a put based on protecting a price at 25, we're buying an out of the money put. We're buying a 25 delta put. We're not buying an at the money put, which as students, you know, approximately a 50 delta is out the money. So that means the cost of that option is cheap. And that's good. That lowers our hedge cost. We're out of the money. We're not in the money on that. And that's that's really interesting. If we're in backwardation, which is where Mattel Gazelle Shaft was, and again, let's look at that. We're here, we're in backwardation. The spot is trading at 70. Yet, if we go out, let's say to August, September, July, August, September, with the futures at 63, um, we're buying a 70 contract, let's say for, in this case, May, uh, March. We're, look, we're looking at a situation where we're buying a, 42 delta option and out of the money call of course so that's interesting because they're trying to protect their price so what did what did they do what did mattel gazelle chef do they were in backwardation and that means of course the spots trading here at 20 and as you go down it's trading as you go farther out so what did they do they essentially um bought Long futures on the front end, and they stacked them. That means all their notion was, was 30 days out. And then they bought forwards on the back end, make sure they were protecting that price. Well, what did the market do? It went back. It went into Contango, which it had done, but it went into Contango. And what happened was the long future got crushed. They had margin calls because it was a standardized contract. The, they were short the back end, but the back end never moves as much as the front end, right? Because vol is whippy, right? So the long dated forwards did mark to market. So they couldn't monetize the profit against the losses, but they had a paid margin against these losses and it destroyed the company. Uh, forwards made money, but no mark to market. And of course, forwards didn't make nearly as much money. So you can say they were over hedged on that, on that 
position that says we can give you a dividend if prices rises, which is the reason why they sold so many contracts because it was too good to be true. So anyway, uh, that's what happens. So what they could have done is, number one, they could have just bought a long-dated swap, over-the-counter swap, protecting their, their position. And then what they could have done is they could have stacked or not even stripped. They could have stripped just call, out-of-the-money calls. Again, because the spots here, I'm buying a 40, a 30 delta call. It's not very expensive. And if, if the market moves down, I just lose the call. So they could have, instead of setting the price at 20, maybe 21 or 22, they still would have had, actually, they were locking in maybe a $3 profit. They could have had like a $4 profit per barrel, paying for the call, paying for that opportunity because the market kept going up. These calls would have caught a bid. So they could have stripped them, not stacked them. Or what they also could have done is they could have, they could have done a stack and not roll out, but rolled in. Now, that's a little bit foreign, but all you're doing is you're buying a longer dated call out of the money, let's say six months, 12 months. And then as the market rises, you can roll up and in. And so what you're doing is you're monetizing those profits mark to market. You're delivering it to your, the benefit to your client or customer. And you're also locking in a profit and you're also increasing your gamma convexity. So you roll up and in, not up and out. So that's, that's what they could have done. And that would have been very nice. The other thing could have done is, is one of my favorite hedges, especially in a very volatile market. We talked about the back sprint. They could have done the same concept. Uh, 45 long, about a 65 short, uh, separated them and put that trade on for a, a zero cost or a slight credit. As long as the market doesn't stay flat, this is a great trade. Plus, I'm going out, in this case, 211 days. So I'm not paying a lot of daily decay. And I wouldn't hold this. Again, you don't want to hold that back spread too long, maybe roll it every three months. But if the market ripped or the market crashed, they can restrike it to at the money. This would have been another nice way they could have given that benefit. And maybe on the long end, stayed with the, stayed with the swap. Uh, and again, when I look at the back test of the callback spread against spot, it the hedge shows very nice response when oil uh, when oil moves, but it doesn't lose a lot of decay because it doesn't have a lot of carry, especially it's volatile. So again, here's a better way to build a mousetrap, what they could have done, but being, being short, all that, um, actually being long at front end uh, destroyed the company because it went against them. Thanks for listening.